All right. Uh, We've uh, finished with chapter three, and so what I want to talk about is chapter four. Chapter four is a very short chapter. It basically gives you a, uh, an overview of some of the techniques we're going to be using in chapters five and six when we discuss how to derive uh, current potential curves that are based on real mass transfer situations, migration, diffusion, and convection. So in this uh, next section of le set of lectures, which I'm going to cover chapter four and also some stuff in appendix A. We're going to set ourselves up for some tools for solving these sorts of problems. And so basically, we're going to be discussing in chapter four the idea of mass transfer. Whereas before, we gave a very basic and semi-empirical treatment of mass transfer using a mass transfer coefficient. Now we're going to actually go ahead and solve some equations and actually get some real mathematical descriptions of mass transfer in electrochemical systems. So we're going to be discussing some mass transfer theory and solutions. As we've already discussed, mass transfer is caused by diffusion, migration, and convection. Diffusion is occurring as a concentration develops, concentration gradients develop in solution, we'll get a diffusion effect. Migration occurs when we have an external applied electric field that causes ions to migrate in response to that electric field. And convection occurs when we stir the solution somehow or cause it to move in a bulk fashion, thus carrying ions or molecules along with it. Um, these two, diffusion and migrations, can be considered to be caused by gradients in the chemi electrochemical potential. So whenever we do have these sorts of gradients, we'd expect a movement of ions in response to equalize that gradient in order to reach equilibrium. So let's think about our electrochemical potential again. For species J, we can write the electrochemical potential for species J is equal to the standard potential of species J plus an activity term of species that J plus an electrical term. Okay, and so this would be basically a local potential. What the potential is, where that ion is at, or a molecule J is at. Let's suppose we take our species J and move it some infinitesimal distance away from its initial point. So we can correspondingly have a point here, and let's move it more than an infinitesimal distance, but let's just suppose that that's a small distance. And so we can write that the electrochemical potential of species J at position X is some value. If we move it to here, now we have the electrochemical potential of species J at X plus a, a delta X. And we're thinking about movement in only one dimension, although we could consider movement in any of three dimensions if we care to. Now, importantly, if the chemical potential at point X for species J is not equal to the chemical potential at, for species J at the point x plus delta x, then we can get a movement. We can get a mass transfer of species j to, again, to minimize that difference to, to make an equilibrium process occur. So basically, what we'll see is we'll see a flux. A flux will develop, where a flux is the movement of species j. Now, in general, fluxes are three-dimensionals, and fluxes are usually given in American and English literature, capital letter J, to indicate moles per um, centimeters second. So some, some number of moles per, some moving through some area given by centimeter squared per time, so per second. Now for a one-dimensional problem, which is all we're going to be considering in this class as a, as a rule, um, we're going to be talking about a flux of species J 
in say the x direction. And that's going to be proportional to um, the gradient of chemical, electrochemical potential. So we're going to think about the derivative of the electrochemical potential in the x direction. And so that's our gradient. So what we want to do is figure out what that gradient in chemical potential is. And if we know that gradient in chemical potential, we can solve the movement of our species. Now we can't have that, so that's not directly proportional to. So what we'll do is we'll put in the proper units that we'll have to have for electrochemical systems. And what we do is basically find that our flux is going to be equal to concentration of species J, a diffusion coefficient of species J, gas constant, temperature, times our derivative of the chemical potential or the gradient of the chemical potential. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're not often interested, we can't really get the chemical, electrochemical potential directly. So what we'll do is we'll expand that chemical potential term, our electrochemical potential term into a chemical potential set of terms that includes the potential. So let's do that. Let's make it into a chemical potential set of terms. Uh, and we see that, oops, I forgot a negative sign up there. We see that now we've got C sub J, D sub J, or RT, times a term that's got the activity in it. So in this case, we're going to talk about a activity gradient, which is essentially talking about a concentration gradient, right? So we'll generally also neglect activities and use concentrations instead. Plus a electrical gradient, which is going to be again in one dimension. So we have a, 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 um, a gradient in activity or concentration and a gradient in electrical potential. And so we can rewrite this one actually to be a little bit more convenient. Okay. Now, that equation is um, a term for migration and diffusion. Let's add in our convection term. Now, the convection term doesn't depend on the um, uh, chemical potential or the electrochemical potential, but just depends on the applied uh, externally applied um, stirring. But if we have a convection term, we can add in a term that would relate to that. And we can break apart our expression to be, to have a more clear idea of what each of the terms mean. So let's write first the term here, which is the diffusional term. So diffusion is going to be movement down a concentration gradient. Then we'll add in a, a, the electrical term, which is a migration process. And then finally, we will add in our convective term which is a, a velocity. So concentration times the velocity of the solution in the x direction. Again, notice this all in one dimension. We've got a diffusional term, um, a migration term, and actually we can extract out of this. You can see this part of the equation is a mobility term actually. And that migration term is, um, is, that, is that whole thing. Now in general, we are interested in, in, for the next chapter or so, we're going to be interested in diffusion term, diffusion processes only. So whenever we set up our experiment, we're going to try to minimize the effect of concentration and the effect of migration, 
how can we minimize convection? Well, we can r reduce the velocity of the solution to zero as much as possible. We can not stir it. We can try to avoid convective transport by uh, density gradients that can be set up. So we want to avoid having a large amount of materials being converted so that we get a density gradient set up or a temperature gradient set up that would lead to convection cells. Migration, we want to basically try to eliminate migration by either making the concentration of our species small or by minimizing the local electrical potential gradient. And we'll see how we can do that a little bit later. That doesn't sound so easy, but we can do that actually quite easily. So we're going to be left generally with diffusion problems. And, um, but later on, we'll see how to treat convective transport. Generally, we don't concern ourselves with migration processes in, in, in classes in electrochemistry, although it's sometimes important. It's not that it's not important. It's just that it's kind of complicated, so we just ignore it. Uh, but it's not such a good thing to ignore sometimes. All right, so let's, uh, okay. But let's look at a situation, oops, all right down here, where we have both, um, where we look at the flux of species J Again, let's eliminate convection because we can eliminate convection just by not stirring the solution generally. So we can easily eliminate convection. In general, eliminating migration and diffusion requires more drastic steps. Well, a flux of species J in the x direction is going to be composed of two components now since we have only diffusion and migration. So it'll be diffusional component uh, for the flux of J in the X direction plus a flux that's composed of a migrational component of species J in the X direction. And J, the flux is going to be proportional or equal to the current over NF um, in this particular case, NFA actually usually. All right, so if we take an electrochemical cell and we do an experiment or we apply a voltage and we measure the current and we put, for example, two copper electrodes in the system. Electrons are moving like so. And uh, we can take at our anode and put electrons in. Um, or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or cathode, we can put electrons in to copper 2 plus to make them copper, which maybe sticks to the electrode, and then we can take electrons away. So what's the um, movement of electrons? Electrons are easy to visualize. The rest of the current that flows in our cell, in order to make a loop, we have to have the movement of ions. And so, for example, if we're going to have copper in solution, we're basically going to have copper 2 plus ions and we have chloride ions, or whatever ions that we have to, uh, to be in, um, associated with the copper. We've got to have copper chloride or copper nitrate or something like that in solution. So let's suppose we have chloride ions in solution. So in order to get current to flow through our external circuit, we have to have ions moving inside the circuit, in the, in the cell. So current in that we measure externally is flowing internally uh, and it's carried by the flux of solution species. So in other words, any species uh, J that's moving is carrying some fraction of the current we call I sub J and that fraction of the current can be further broken down into a migration term and a, um, a J term. And the total current is going to be the sum for all of the species in solution 
Okay, let's call it K. So we'll sum all the species in solution. So in order to understand the current flow in solution, we have to kind of understand what's going on in the bulk, in the, in the solution itself. Now what carries the current? I already said the movement of ions carries the current. Now in the bulk of the solution, there really is no diffusion is going to be allowed because there's, um, um, there's really no concentration gradient in the bulk. The bulk is the bulk. Unless we've got some artificial concentration gradient being developed by, say, stirring or something like that, we're not going to have a concentration gradient. So the only way the ions are going to be moving in the bulk of the solution away from the electrodes is to have migration carrying the, the current. In other words, the electric field that's set up by having a potential difference between those two electrodes is causing the movement of ions. Now at the interface, now we can have both migration and diffusion because at the interface, especially if we have current flow, there will now be a concentration gradient because we're reducing or oxidizing those copper ions, there will be a difference between the concentration of those copper ions at the electrode surface and the concentration of those copper ions at some distance away from the electrode surface. So there will be a movement of ions in that particular case. And so we get migration and diffusion uh, to can be concerned with. All right. Now, migration will always be carrying the current in the boat. Now what we can do though for our experiments is to try to minimize the effect of migration of species J. So although the total amount of current carried by species J in the X direction is always going to be the diffusional term and the migration term, we can actually make the total amount of current being carried by species J small. How can we do that? Well, we can add some other species to the solution that will carry the, that will be carrying the current. So generally what we do is make migration of the desired species, J, by adding an electrolyte. And they call that a supporting electrolyte. And that supporting electrolyte should be inert and not react with the solution species. And what happens then is if we add a large excess of supporting electrolyte is now the migration uh, the current is carried by the migration of the supporting electrolyte species predominantly and the migration of species J is minimal. So the fraction of current carried by a species that we're interested in is minimal. That means that the diffusional term does not really change here but the migrational term is changed dramatically. So the ratio goes from a large amount carried by diffusion only. Supporting electrolyte does a couple good things for us. It, as I said, it eliminates basically the migration component or makes it small. It also minimizes solution resistance. So that when we do apply a current to our system or a current flows, the, the voltage that is a, developed is not used up by the ohmic drop or the solution resistance. We can make that smaller by having a large excess of supporting electrolyte. It also can act as a buffer, a buffer in the traditional sense of keeping a pH constant, but it can also act as a buffer to keep the activity of species J basically constant. By keeping a high concentration of ions in solution, the activity of species J cannot vary very much and that's important so that we can actually get good results a lot of times. It, it can be bad though because A, we have to add something to the solution and that can introduce impurities. Because we're adding a large excess of our supporting electrolyte, uh, we need to worry about, well maybe that electrolyte has uh, something bad associated with it, it might have a little bit of an impurity. So even if it's only present at 1%, that can be a large amount of impurity. Uh, particularly for non-aqueous solvents, uh, for example, the supporting electrolyte has to have very low concentrations of water 
Otherwise, it will add a lot of water to the system, and that can be difficult to accomplish. It also can do things like react with um, your species that you're interested in. So you have to be careful that whatever you add as an electrolyte does not undergo undergo a uh, some reaction with your species. And likewise, um, the other thing is you often you don't want to add something that can undergo electrolysis uh, because uh, you may mask the electrolysis that you're interested in by the electrolysis of the supporting electrolyte. 